Owen, you're in a, one of our academic campuses, I believe. Would you like to share where you are at the moment? I am yeah. currently sitting in the Students' Union area of the St. Patrick's campus here. It's lovely, actually. It's nice and quiet, which is nice. So the next, exclusively the next 27 minutes is all going to be about the St. Patrick's campus and the education side of things. So you will be delighted, well, you'll both be delighted, but as will our listeners. <laughs> listeners. So definitely want to talk and we will certainly uh, talk about the course, what goes on um, inside the, the classroom, want to talk a little bit of out, outside the classroom. And then we'll just talk a little bit around, I guess, the opportunities in general off the back of the program, because those that are listening will, will be interested. Just before we kick into it and just jump into the conversation, just a reminder on the screen, depending on what device or if you're on a laptop, there's a Q&A function. If you click on that, you'll be able to ask a question and I'll be happy to uh, put it to either Ellen or Owen at any stage. So do ask and do get involved. It'll be anonymous, so don't worry. So who wants to take, tell us a little bit about the program uh, from a helicopter view, what goes on, what's it all about, class sizes, structure. Ellen, we'll go to you. Okay, yes. Yeah. So um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ellen and I'm in my final year of the Bachelor of Education. And um, so basically the BEAD program is a very kind of busy, full on program. And basically the program qualifies you at the end of your four years um, to become a primary school teacher. And um, there is about 450, it kind of depends year to year, but approximately 450 people in each year of the course. So it's a really big course. I think it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest in DCU. Um, and there's four years to the course. Generally, the points tend to be in around 460, 465, kind of in that kind of range. I know last year they kind of went up a little bit, but um, predicted grades and stuff kind of, you know, affected a lot of the points. Um, but generally, they're kind of around the same. Um, basically, the, co the course is kind of taught in kind of two different types of classes, mainly um, seminars, which are kind of groups of 20, 30 kind of. Um, and those change for each class. So it's not like you're put in a class at the start of first year and you move with them. It's literally a different group of 20 or 30 each hour of the day. And then the other part of the course is taught through lectures where it could be all 450 of us in one giant lecture hall, E218 in St. Pat's. And um, they're kind of more like lectures with PowerPoints and that kind of thing. Whereas the stuff that happens in the smaller groups is kind of very interactive. You have like PE classes and drama classes, music classes, and you're up off your feet always doing things. If I was reading the prospectus on what isn't in it as such that is very apparent or apparent when you arrive in there in your first day and first week. So what should people, what do people need to know about it? aside from the academics and what's it all about? Um, so I think, first of all, just in terms of St. Patrick's campus itself, I think the atmosphere in it is really nice. Like you walk in and everyone kind of knows each other and you get a smile and a wave because you've been in the lecture with someone or you've just seen them around or anything like that. Like that's something that's really apparent from the first couple of weeks you go in. And then I think you just have to be prepared to put yourself in the shoes of the child which is something that can feel really unnatural. Uh, Ellen's laughing away because yeah, it's something definitely. that's so, so unnatural. Especially in first year, you can feel like you're making a bit of an idiot out of yourself sometimes. But it's honestly the best way to experience it. Like it's it, in an early ed, in an early education, early childhood education seminar, we might be looking at, you know, how kids learn through play and talking about sand and fine motor skills and play-doh and fine motor skills and things like that and then you'd actually play with sand and play-doh for a little while so it's something that you know it takes a while to get used to but once you do that it's actually really quite fun because you're getting stuff to use for the classroom you're also having a bit of crack while you're doing it because you're doing it with your friends and for your placement and for your further teaching it's giving you actual ideas that you know are tried and tested and ready to use in the classroom but it's, it's it sorry go on Al. It, it's something that that definitely doesn't come naturally at the start and you have to really discover the child within yourself as well if that makes sense no no it does and that's what that's the next question is going to ask how can you accelerate or can you so, so so the reason why i wanted to ask the question in the first place was obviously try and cover those little areas that you don't quite often hear about or get into the shoes of the child but in that particular in this particular example is it just a matter of people being aware of it and knowing it's coming and doing their very best to immerse themselves? Or is there any other way that you found in looking back that could maybe accelerate that particular area? I, I think you just, if you're prepared for it and you know it's coming, 
it's that little bit easier. It's it's a great way. It's a fantastic icebreaker because especially me, I came in not knowing anyone on the course. So it's a brilliant icebreaker when you're all there and you're playing with like toy cars on the on the little road mat thing that every kid seemed to have in their bedroom. Um, and it's just a great kind of icebreaker and you have the chats and it was like, oh, wasn't that gas when we were doing that in the early childhood seminar? And that's that's really the best way you can make friends and get to know people through that. Ellen, it's a busy program. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, there's pro- we probably have, you know, it kind of depends on, each- on the semester. We have typically like 24 to 26 hours a week of contact um, hours, so lectures and seminars. And then, you know, we do an awful lot of modules. So um, we have like, think of every subject you did in primary school. We have a module in all of them. And then we have another, maybe like 15 on top of that that are more about education, psychology, philosophy, special education, all that kind of thing. And then you have work and assignments and stuff to do in all of them. So, you know, it is a lot of juggling and it's busy, but it's, it's, it turns out to be so worthwhile. Like I'm on placement at the moment. So I'm in schools at the moment. And there are some things that I'm doing with my class now that I learned about in first year that I just maybe hadn't had a chance to do until now, just depending on the classes. And it's so great to kind of think about, oh, you know, I remember hearing about that and now I'm seeing that happening and it all just becomes comes full circle. So you're telling me that it's all set up for a reason. They're not just giving you stuff to do for the fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a busy program. And what I want to do in a couple of minutes is balance up that busyness, that academic with, I guess, how you can unwind, how you can get involved in social and different things. So I'll do that in a few minutes time for those that are listening, because it obviously is busy and that's important. But, but there is stuff that goes on, I guess, to counterbalance. Just a reminder, if you're watching this or listening to this live, there's a Q&A function on the screen. You can ask any questions. Um, ask any questions uh, that, that you might have uh, for either Ellen or own the next couple of minutes that we're speaking. So you know a bit about the program, as in you're looking to go to DCU, you're interested in the space, the career pathway is something that you think, yeah, I could do this. How or where, from your journey anyway, do you get more information aside from maybe online or what did, what did you, and maybe Owen will go to you first, what did you do to get more information around your research? Um, so in terms of a prospective student, yeah. Um, so I, I found actually speaking to students at the open day was a brilliant thing just in terms of actually understanding something from a student perspective, because I think you read all this information online and you look at pictures and you look at videos and things like that and it doesn't exactly feel personal. Whereas if you get that personal touch in terms of someone's actual experience on the course and if they say, look, this is what happens, um, it's not actually that bad because you see, you know, someone says 24, 26 hours of contact hours a week. You think that's a lot. But when you talk to students, I found that was the biggest thing. And actually, I know that might not be possible in COVID and everything like that, but actually visiting the campus was a big thing for me, just in terms of knowing where I was going to be and what the facilities would be like and sort of just the, the atmosphere there as well. Like it was, it was something really nice to experience, but obviously with COVID and everything like that it's a, it's a little bit of a different journey yeah no sure absolutely and that's understandable I get could I just jump in a little bit so for those that are listening now live or watching this back so oh Nell you just do this all the time when people are interested in coming to DCU could I talk to a student and the answer is yes in terms of what we would offer I know yourselves and you've probably even done it this week already but when students reach out we often put them in direct contact to give you a sense of what the student thinks pretty much what we're talking about now what the student thinks what they do what they say how they give their interpretation so i guess that offer is open and always will be in terms of your your research for dcu uh, a question came in there ellen so i might throw this one over to you but but i'll jump in if you want as well were you both certain you wanted to be a primary school teacher when you filled out the cao ellen um, yeah, so I definitely was certain. I kind of decided when I was a child that I wanted to be a teacher. And um, so I knew that I wanted to do primary school teaching. Now, I will say I've had, in, you know, we're talking to students in the last few weeks, a few people say, you know, I always thought I wanted to do teaching. And now I'm kind of not sure. Now I'm thinking about other things. And I definitely had that too. I was like, oh, you know, I'm really good at biology. Maybe I meant to do science. Like, you know what I mean? And I kind of looked into other courses, but for me, it just always came back to teaching. Um, and I did have a few kind of like 
or other courses that were not educated related like the very bottom of my CAO but my top was all education um, and then I suppose it's a matter of kind of deciding where you want to do it and when in some ways the easy things about primary school teaching is there is only I think four or five places in the country that you can do it so um, it's not maybe like some degrees where you're like I couldn't go do this anywhere so I always just knew I wanted to go to St. Pat's or DCU as it is now part of um, because it's very local to me and I know some teachers who've been there and had great things to say about it so yeah CAO I definitely knew that DCU and teaching is what I wanted. Owen always wanted to be a teacher? Um, up until the CAO opened I was absolutely 100% certain that I wanted to be a primary school teacher and then all of a sudden it's I got this sort of surge of do I actually want to do this do I not and then as I thought about it more, I sat back and thought about it. I thought this is something I want to do, but it's completely normal. I think between me and Ellen, we've both made it so clear that it's completely normal to have doubts. And if you're not sure, because I, from the moment I was in primary school, wanted to be a primary school teacher, going through secondary school, I knew I wanted to be a primary school teacher. And then when it came down to actually putting it down on my CAO, all of a sudden something clicked and I was like, but do I actually want to do it? So it's completely normal, but I trust my gut I trusted my gut and I, I couldn't be happier with where I am now in terms of the course I, I guess one of the things there and I mentioned a moment ago in a slightly different way but DCU is always here to I guess support people so and that is natural I'm sure for many people to maybe decide or maybe is this for me or not so reaching out and the student recruitment team are always helpful always on hand and willing to help in, in that regard so if I could just summarize where we are, because I want to counterbalance the conversation and try to get into a little bit around outside of the classroom, but you've done your research, you've reached out, you've been to campus, you love the environment and the atmosphere, as we were talking about already. Um, you put yourself in the shoes of the child and you really immerse yourself into that space. You're very busy, loads of contact hours, meeting people all the time, lots of assignments, Brilliant. But what happens outside the classroom? And if we could try then describe some of the opportunities, you know, club society, student ambassadors, I guess, Ellen, we might go to you first, just in terms of outside the classroom, give people a sense of what goes on and some of the opportunities that are available. Yeah, of course. So um, I came into college, like very excited. I'd kind of, I've always like did lots of after school activities, but I kind of stopped a good few of them, like coming up to the leaving cert and that kind of thing. So I came in like ready to try everything I could try. And um, so I signed up for a bunch of different societies in first year and um, drama, dance, the gymnastics and trampolining. And um, there's a teaching society, a few other things as well that some societies I actually never ended up getting too involved in. But um, for me, drama was the one I got the most involved in. And then I also, um, I was a, on the student council in secondary school the whole way up. So I also went for class rep and I was lucky to get that. So um, between the students union, drama, and then also just general events that sometimes are on, like they have a few freshers events in first year. And I was a bit like, oh, I don't know like it's when the freshers events are on you're kind of so early into your point in your course that you kind of haven't made necessarily new friends enough to want to go with new people and like you know it's be kind of hard to decide like oh am I going to go or not but I'm so glad that I went to some of them because um you do like you just it's so good to push yourself and I feel like start off that first week or whatever in September you know pushing yourself a little bit and it'll keep yourself pushed for the rest of the um, time there so yeah there's plenty of club and society opportunities and stuff like that so um for me it was drama I did a couple of shows in first year and then I've gone on trips with them and stuff as well and um yeah no definitely just get get stuck in Big advice, and it's actually common thread and team throughout all of these in conversation with conversation the last couple of weeks. Get involved, immerse yourself, albeit it can be a challenge and overwhelming and daunting, I guess, in some cases. Own anything different, uh, student ambassador life, um, anything else we're missing outside the classroom? Um, student ambassador program is something brilliant. I obviously have made, met so many people from so many different courses in DCU, which I maybe wouldn't have had the experience of before because I wouldn't as be as involved in clubs and societies as other people. So I think that was a brilliant opportunity and the team have been brilliant the whole way through just in terms of supporting us in kind of just beyond the student recruitment side of things. So that's been brilliant. Um, 
and I was also involved as a class rep. I was elected onto our student union executive team in first year as the first year officer for the whole of DCU, which was really daunting at the start, representing that many people. And then I'm actually the chairperson of our class rep council now this year. So even if there's not a club or sock that you find that you really click with and involve, get involved in, there's plenty of other ways of getting involved, like the student ambassador program as a class rep, anything like, like there's plenty beyond the clubs and society. So if someone, for whatever reason, doesn't feel like they've slotted into a club or sock uh, in their first couple of weeks or whatever, there's plenty of other ways of getting involved. Yeah, and I guess one of the things, and a couple of questions are coming in, so thank you. Um, I'm going to get to them now in a second. One of the things, I guess, in terms of accelerating your development in a holistic nature at DCU, and I'm a former student at DCU myself, so I can speak as well in terms of being a student, is, I guess, the in-classroom and the, the world-class exposure that you get to the teaching and learning but also outside the classroom around your leadership communication as you mentioned their own getting involved in different committees and giving you I guess a broader perspective over across a couple of different areas and um, one of the areas of the questions that came in uh, is about Gwale talk one is around play sorry the placement uh, the Gwale talk side of things but also if you struggle with the Irish side of things how will you I guess maybe get on in the Gwale talk and just give us a sense of that. Ellen might go to you, but I'll jump in. Yeah, perfect. And um, so the Gale talk in Irish is definitely something that um, lots of people ask about all the time. It's a big kind of worry, I think, for prospective students. And I can completely relate to that. And um, a lot of people think that teachers all went to Gwale schools and they're all kind of fluent. And if unless you're that, you can't cope. And I, the majority are not in that situation. And um, we go to the Gale Talk in first and third year. And um, basically the Gale Talk, it's a teaching council requirement. So wherever you go to do your primary school teaching degree, you're gonna have to go to the Gale Talk. Um, obviously COVID, the kind of changes have been made about that, but um, that's uh, kind of still up in the air for a lot of things. Um, but yeah, so basically go to the Gale Talk for two weeks at Easter um, in first year and third year and the Irish speaking requirements. Basically, you speak Irish while you're um, in your classes as much as possible around the house and on the bus and stuff, but it's not like going in secondary school. You have a lot more free time. Um, and yeah, there's nobody kind of necessarily specifically breathing down your neck. And, you know, if you make grammar mistakes, nobody's coming after you saying, oh, that's wrong or whatever. So definitely the Gale Talk is not something to overly worry about in general. It's actually quite fun. Um, and we didn't get to go last year, but I was actually kind of disappointed, <laughs> even though I was dreading the Gale Talk in first year. <laughs> and then, Owen, if you want to maybe talk about Irish in general. Um, no, I just to echo what Ellen said about um, about the Gale Talk. It, it's not like secondary school at all. It's actually really good fun. Like they don't take your phone off. You you don't get sent home for speaking English or anything like that that you might be afraid of from going in secondary school. And in terms of actually studying Irish within, it's something that causes a lot of people a lot of anxiety. Like I was never in a Gale school, was never a mad Gale gore, but we do two. There's two sort of separate ways you do Irish in primary teaching. So you do one module, which is just about your own Irish, so your own confidence and competence in actually using the language. And it's just about building yourself up to being confident in using the language in your own ability of using it. It's not learning off reams of stuff and learning about stories that you don't really care about, like that might be on some other courses. Um, it's, it's just about your own confidence within it. And then you also look at teaching Irish so methodologies of teaching Irish because it's taught as a second language in most schools. And that's, again, focused more on the teaching end of it. But you'll definitely have built up a confidence from your leave insert and then from the Irish, the other Irish uh, modules within the course. It's not something to worry about. It's you're supported the whole way through it. Um, and it's you don't have to have a, a mighty standard of Irish like some people might might expect. And just to jump in there on that, a lot of people ask, is it kind of so much harder than leaving cert Irish? And I would honestly say like it's very similar, if not the same kind of requirements and um, grammar wise and stuff. It's pretty much like barely like above it, like very they're, they're, similar. You're not going yeah. to be asked to reinvent the wheel when it comes to your no. Gaelga or anything like that. It's, it's building on what you already know. Yeah. yeah. And that is good to know. But, but I guess nonetheless, people still have their own um 
I guess, queries around it. And I just want to drop in. So student help at dcu.ie, you'll get us on that any time. If, if the person that asked that question, you'd like to follow up and maybe get a little bit more, I guess, reassurance or what's on offer, how it works, just please do get in touch any time. We're here, as I said, all the time. And that's our job to help and support people with your research to give them the answers that they need. Another question, thank you for people asking questions. Much appreciated. Another question that came in and you may, no, I guess some of the answer, or all of the answer, but the, does Church of Ireland uh, restricted entry mix all together? And then the second part is, um, and I'm happy to take it, but Owen, you might want to, is at the moment, are students uh, uh, learning from home? Um, so in terms of the Church of Ireland students, they, in any of our curriculum areas, they're all shared. The only difference between them is that they don't get to choose a specialism that theirs is already chosen for working in small schools and that their religious education uh, content is different as well. In terms of everything else, it's the exact same course, and you're mixed in with people from all the other entry routes as well. Um, and the other question, could you just... The, the other something? question was, an eagle-eyed person noticed that you were on campus, so they wanted, <laughs> to know, they wanted to know, how are you on campus? Are the students in general, are they on campus? How is um, learning going? So first and second years are on campus at the moment uh, a couple of days a week depending on depending on the week basically uh, third and fourth year students are more at home uh, in terms of being on campus it's been they've been operating at the highest level of restrictions anyway even when we were at level three or level two so masks have to be worn at all times inside the only reason i'm not is because there's no one in the room close to me and I don't want to have my voice muffled for the video or anything like that. There's sanitization stations around the campus, everything like that. And all your classes are fully COVID safe in terms of following guidelines, everything like that. Classrooms are, are spaced out. You have your, your two meter bubble around you, everything like that. But a lot of things that may have sometimes been on campus before, like the bigger lectures, might be moved online simply because they can't accommodate the numbers in, in that kind of size sure. on campus. Sure. And hopefully for the people that are watching this live or even watching this back and, and please God, this time next year, 2021, that, that I guess the physical opportunities, uh, as we were mentioned, the atmosphere, the people, all those wonderful things, you know, we back working as normal per se. Uh, but thanks for the question. And there is a couple of minutes left, literally five minutes left. If there is any other last minute questions, please do get them in. I, I, I asked this question in a number of different ways. This is for both. Uh, Ellen, we might jump to you. Looking back now, knowing what you know, so you people that are now tuning in, watching this live, watching this back and record, they're doing their research, they're going to open days, they're talking to students, they're doing everything they can. Anything else, what advice would you give to yourself? What was that one thing or two things that said, if I had known that then, that would have helped? Um, I don't know. I think in some ways, um, I kind of put a lot of pressure on myself at the start to be like, I need, like, you know, I'm here a week, I'm here two weeks, I should have, I should have a great group of friends by now. I should be settled in. I should, you know, I thought that I, all these things would have happened for me that just didn't happen for a very long time. And like, that's the case with a lot of people, like the group of friends that I'm friends with now. Um, I didn't really like, we didn't really come together until like maybe February of first year. Do you know what I mean? And all, a lot of the groups of friends kind of only formed around then or maybe towards the end of the first semester. So I think the biggest thing for me, and I knew people in my course, I knew loads of people in GCU. So it wasn't a case that I went in not knowing anyone or anything, but I just expected a lot of things to happen, like making friends, feeling settled, coping with the work. Like, you know, it, it was a different kind of writing for writing for college. And I found that kind of very like kind of daunting and stuff. And I, felt that I should be better at it than I was and now looking back I'm like how how could I have been if I was the first time doing it how would I expect myself to have been able to do it more so I think that's something I would just say like just be don't be expecting yourself to be able to do more than you're going to be able to do oh, oh and you're nodding your head you're in agreement or you're oh, completely yeah and I think it's uh in in terms of when you're a prospective student when you're a student just ask questions all the time never be afraid to ask questions even if it seems like something so small and stupid that you think you should know just ask like it it, it won't be the first time anyone's heard that question the lights after turning off on me um <laughs> it won't be the first time they've heard that question and it just can help clarify things that you might someone might think is obvious but they don't appreciate that you don't know that yet when you're 
you know, looking to study somewhere when you're actually studying somewhere. It's just questions are so important. Yeah, and it's so true. And just to maybe reiterate, there's people like myself employed by the university that are here to assist and support. There's, as we mentioned in previous conversations, there's a whole student support and development team that once you get to DCU or you're in your journey coming into DCU, again, if there's any issues, you want to change course, you have something going on, you're not happy, loads of different things. I guess staff are fully employed by the university to support, as are a group of wonderful student ambassadors, just like the two of you guys are in terms of what you do, as are a group of student ambassadors who are, I guess, that first point of contact around open days and various other things. So we have about probably two minutes left um, in terms of the conversation. So maybe if we could just leave the last words or work to yourself in terms of your DCU experience, trying to sum it up so far and lots more to go, please God, try to sum up your experience so far. And I know we're putting on the spot a little bit, but just try to, I guess, summarize or whatever way you can, what stands out, what's been good for you, how have you enjoyed your time or what has been the highlights so far? Uh, Ellen? Um, I suppose like some of the highlights for me have just been like the friends I've made and because of the friends I made, some of the trips I've gone, the places I've been to like on holidays and stuff, no, nothing like, you know, I haven't gone backpacking or anything like crazy or anything, but just things like that, like friends I've made and kind of think things like that, that I've really enjoyed. And um, I suppose like being on placement and um that kind of thing like being in the classroom and stuff kind of I think it makes me because I I know I wanted to be a teacher so it makes me kind of happy then when I get to be out in schools and um kind of working as an actual teacher and stuff they're kind of things that stand out for me and just feeling like a part of something um when you're in a club or society or student ambassadors and um, they're just like, like great feelings that I have from um, being part of DCU. Brilliant to hear. Owen last word to you I, I think it's 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 all the little things that add up. I think like it, I can't put my finger on one thing that's been like a standout moment in DCU or a standout thing about my time in college in general. It's all the little moments and little things you do, like, you know, going for coffee with your friends after a lecture or people you've just met or sitting beside someone in a lecture who you think I really should know their name, but you don't. <laughs> and you have to kind of like swallow your pride and ask them or anything like that it's just all the little moments like that really add up to just have this whole experience in general it's something kind of really hard to to articulate and explain um yeah it's just little moments that add up to make an experience it's probably a really fitting way to finish um and we have a couple of seconds left so thanks for everybody tuned in but i guess all those little moments um as you put it there is something it's like a layered approach you're getting your your teaching over here you're meeting your friends over here you're getting your social opportunities over here there's obviously a career at the end of it all um, and i guess just the experiences in general and just i guess every way you turn uh, from the St. Patrick's campus um, that, that you guys are, are, are on from the, up to the Glass and Evan campus and, and across to our other sports campuses, the other campuses that we have, I guess there's so many opportunities. So uh, DCU, uh, um, needless to say, is very lucky to have you both. Uh, as always, thanks for your time. Thanks for your insights, your attention um, around just helping others, giving back, uh, not only in ways like this, but also, as I mentioned earlier on, you can contact any one of you. Um, and any one of the student master team 24 seven literally and you get a response in terms of the, the the personalized kind of touch and feel that I guess we all would have in many different ways having come through DCU and currently in DCU um, in terms of our, our journeys um, both as staff and students so really just say thank you on behalf of everybody watching live and um, you're watching this back recorded you get us anytime on student help at dcu.a hopefully we'll see both um, of you very very soon thanks Johnny no thanks Johnny thanks everyone